Hello, welcome back to the Believe You Are a Good Mom podcast. I'm Emily Wardrop from Drop the Word Life Coaching, and today I've got Laura Lines with me. Hi, Laura. Hello, how are you? This is so fun. So Laura is a homeschool mom coach, yeah. and so we're going to talk all things homeschool today, which I think I've never done. I can't believe that. Well, yeah. I can't believe that because I don't homeschool and I don't have any interest in homeschooling, <laughs> but I know that lots of moms do, and she has a fun story about how she got into it and all the things, but... Like always, before I get ahead of myself, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Lara Lines. I'm from Arizona. I have six kids. My oldest is 12. My youngest is one. Um, I'm not sure what else to say. Let's see. I, I've been homeschooling for about five years. Um, I'm the heart learning homeschool coach. So I specify that because that is a unique method of homeschooling. Um, there are so many different ways of homeschooling. Um, lots of different methods, lots of, lots of different styles of homeschooling. So that's my unique style. And is that a program? That's a thing that anybody can do, or is that your creation? So no heart learning, there's actually like a variety of, even under that umbrella, there's a lot of different ways to heart learn, if that makes sense. Um, but heart learning, um, you know what? I did not bring my, my little heart model, but I have a heart model that is my creation. So that's kind of like my sub um, way of homeschooling under the homeschooling umbrella. Nice. Yeah. So um, let's just run with that for a second. Cause now I'm yeah. intrigued by what heart learning means because what it sounds like it means sounds super fun. Yeah. So essentially it's like more of a holistic way of learning because it's not just learning for the mind mm -hmm. it's learning with the heart. So essentially it's like following your children's interests, following their passions, helping them develop their passions and interests. Um, because I know for me and my husband and a lot of us, um, we went through, you know, years and years of school and then get to college and don't even know what we want to do or be, or we change our major several times and then eventually get to a job that we don't even like. And then it's like, we, we feel stuck in this job and it just kind of defeats the whole purpose of life where it's like, then you go through this like identity crisis eventually of like, who am I? And mm -hmm. so we want to help our children connect with themselves, connect with their hearts and develop um, who they are, what they love to do, what are their passions and gifts and talents, and then help them use those gifts and talents to, you know, create their future. Um, I believe that God gave us each individual gifts and talents that when we develop them and follow them, um, that, you know, we, we put value out into the world, kind of like what we're doing. We're following our passions. We create value for the world and then it turns around in value. And yeah, so it's That's essentially so awesome. just following your heart and connecting your mind and heart. I love that so much. Cause it sounds, I mean, in my head, it's like school is you just do what you're told. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and then as soon as you start having some choices, it's like, Oh wait, I don't even know. Like in yeah. my experience in high school was the first time I could actually choose electives and mm -hmm. I just filled them up with Spanish and band because that's what yeah. I did was Spanish oh. and band. And I did, I still didn't even have a choice. It was just like, well, yeah, Spanish and band. And yeah. finally, when I was like, I don't have to do band, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> and I finally quit band. Then I started art because I actually was interested and liked art. And so I'm in art 101, basically as a senior with all the freshmen, you know, <laughs> cause I'm like, yeah. I'm finally. And so then in college, I finally started kind of developing more of that interest, you know, and I felt way behind because I could have been doing this forever, but I was wasting my time in band, you know, and yeah. that was kind of the story I told, you know, so yeah. it'd be really fun to have been able to even think that that was an option earlier, you know, Yeah. Well, versus I, mean I think of like my son, sorry, mm -hmm. um, where we were just saying before we hit record, I'm like, I've never considered homeschooling because he needs a teacher <laughs> like yeah. he does not let me teach him anything he needs someone else to do that so and so as you're talking I'm like if I just let him do what he's interested in he would just play Minecraft and play with Lego all day long which is what we've done all summer which is great but he does need to learn to read and write at some point you know yeah. and so it's like someone else needs to teach him that stuff and I get to just develop his passions yeah. you know and yeah. um anyway that's just um, it's just really fun. Like when we drop all the expectations, right. Of what 
which is what I talk about on this podcast all the time. We drop the expectations of what we think a good mom is. Mm -hmm. Then we can just explore like what we actually want to do. So same with our kids. If we don't have these expectations of what they should be, then we can actually explore who they really are. So, yeah. And I think that's the hardest part because, you know, we, especially if you start like me, I started in public school. And then when you shift to homeschooling, it's like, now you don't have those guide, guide rails to follow but you also don't have the rules. You don't have the expectations. You really get, you have that freedom to decide for yourself what kind of homeschool mom you want to be. And your children have the space to decide who they want to be. Mm-hmm. And I think that for me is a huge shift because, um, you know, for, for me and my husband, I, we have learned that as we've gotten older, we've had to develop the skill of making a decision because growing up the decisions, like you just said, the decisions were made for us. We were told what to learn instead of deciding for ourselves what we want to learn and just a lot of it's just learning how to just make decisions and and think for ourselves and and a lot of that needs a coach so I think this is a a great thing to be a coach for (laughs) is homeschooling moms because all of a sudden you don't have those guardrails anymore and you don't have someone else making those decisions and that's a skill that we haven't developed and it it causes a lot of brain drama I mean oh, yeah. already just that simple concept hey you can do whatever you want instead of what you feel <laughs> is expected of you like that is yeah like it's like jumping going, the deep end <laughs> yeah it's like you're swimming upstream in your brain because you've got yeah. the super highways of like just do what you're told just do what you're told yeah. and then all of a sudden really like breaking out and especially if you're an obliger type you know uh-huh. or you know externally yeah. motivated it's a it's a complete uh rewiring of your brain to be able to do that. So it's been, it's been interesting for my husband because he has, you know, realized through this process that like he would do things when it was expected of him. So, you know, in school, if he was expected to do something like his homework, he would do it. And then, you know, eventually college, it was like, if it was for a class, um, reading scriptures, right? Like if I'm taking a class, I'll read my scriptures. But you know, when, when you don't have class, then it's like, it's a little bit harder to take that upon yourself and to do it yourself because you want to, not just because it's for a class or because you're supposed to. Yeah. And so that's kind of been something that we've talked a lot about is how we want to help our children develop that skill now, because, you know, then when they become an adult, it's not like they have to shift and learn. Then they already know what they want to do and that they do the things because they want to do it, not because they're told to do it or because they are expected to do it. So yeah. it's just kind of that, like what's driving their, their decisions. That's so awesome because that's the moms that I talk to, right. Is that we are, um, we just kind of follow the life path that was presented to us when we were kids, <laughs> you know, yeah. like yeah. I, I drank that Kool-Aid hard, you know, like yeah. just, just, you're just going to grow up and be a mom. And I was like, sweet, I want to be a mom. And luckily I wanted to. And so I never even questioned it. And here I am. And now I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) And so obviously I still want to, but it is like, I have to remind myself I want to, first of all. And I give myself permission to explore other options that it's not the end all be all. And some people don't do that until their kids leave the house, you know, and then they're like, oh, wait, my whole world was my kids. And then now who am I and what do I want to do? Mm-hmm. And so to explore who am I and what do I want to do at such a young age, instead of let me just follow what my culture or what civilization or whatever, you know, what we're programmed to just want to do. And then all of a sudden, maybe some people don't find it until they retire, you know, yeah. they've just done whatever they were supposed to do and just day in, day out. Some people don't time. ever. Their you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so it's so fun that we have this thing called life coaching because we're coaching people on their life. Like, what do you want your life to look like? What do you want right. to do? Choosing it intentionally. Yeah. And so you can just coach those little brains from the get go that they yeah. can do whatever they want. And, and I'd, <laughs> I'd even go so far as to say a hundred percent of the temper tantrums and things that happen is the power struggles, right? is a battle of wills, right? right. That, that we want them to put on their shoes and they want to keep playing with their Lego, whatever it is, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, and so to be able to have the freedom to have your agency that young, <laughs> you know, right. cause that is why they're like pitching a fit all the time is because they're being told what to do all the time. And so the more, and I feel that in myself big time. And then I just squanch it with like, oh, you're just being so prideful. 
you know, yeah. like, cause it's my own like agency. That's like screaming. I'm a person and I have wants and needs if I say, you know, yeah. and, um, and they do too. And we're just like, no, I'm the mother here. Do what I say, you know? Right. So the whole thing is just beautiful. I love it. Yeah. It's just as much of a learning experience for us moms mm-hmm. as the kids. <laughs> Yeah. So tell me about your transition into, cause you said you weren't ever even planning yeah. on homeschool. Yeah. So I was actually like very anti homeschooling when my kids were young and, you know, we were getting ready to start public school and everything. And I had a lot of friends that were homeschooling and, and doing that. And I had a lot of judgment for them. I did. Um, I think kind of is typical, you know, homeschooling has come a long way today, yeah. but you know, back then, you know, the homeschool kids were weird. <laughs> they didn't have a social life. Um, they didn't know how to spell. These were just all my judgments. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like a lot of homeschool moms were, uh, what's the word? Not snobby, but just like, this is the right way. And they were, I felt like they were judgmental, but ironically, I was the one judging right. them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that works. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I also felt like, you know, if we take all the good kids out of the public school system, then what's going to happen to the public school system? Like, like it was my responsibility to carry it, right? Put, keep my kids in there because they were the light. They were the example, um, missionary work opportunities. I was like, well, that's a huge reason why I go to school. Why I send my kids to school. So yeah, it was, that's kind of where I was then. Yeah. Um, and so where's the switch? So Yeah. So in my third daughter, my third child, my daughter, my first daughter was getting ready to go to kindergarten um, where we lived at the time. They were getting ready to transition to full day kindergarten and they weren't they wanted to hear like they invited parents to come to the school board meetings and and um, speak. And so we went because we were not um, wanting her to have full day kindergarten and we went to this meeting and most of the parents needed it for childcare the the full day. And that was the, the reason why the school was doing it because many parents had requested it. Um, and we were outnumbered, our voice was outnumbered. It was overruled and they, they chose that. And we came home feeling so just out of control. Like we didn't have any say in our children's education. And it just kind of opened our eyes to, to that, that, really, they can teach our kids whatever they want. They can teach them whatever they want. They can do school however they want. It's not our choice. We don't have a say in it. And that's where it, what started the whole, like, well, maybe we should homeschool. And at the time, our neighbors were homeschoolers and they had teenagers, like they they had five kids and they were all like teenagers and they were not weird. They were very, they were very social because their parents were social. Their parents had parties all the time. They were involved in church. They were involved in the community in um, volunteering and like service and stuff. And, you know, we talked to them about it and we decided to experiment. So our first year was just an experiment. And from that point on, we decided to take it year by year. And after the end of every year, we would decide together the family, you know, what do we want to do for the next year? Mm -hmm. And eventually it was, this is what our forever lifestyle is. We love this so much. So Wow. That is such a fun story. So, um, the first thing I want to ask you about that is, hold on. I lost it. (laughs) Oh, making decisions, right. We already talked about how that's a skill that we're not even taught young enough. Right. Right. And then making decisions as a family, making decisions as a couple, that's a whole nother ball game, right? They tell you, Oh, compromise, blah, blah, blah. Literally even just figuring out what the heck is a compromise and how do you do it is really hard. So tell me about like, especially if you're remaking that decision every single year, what did that look like and what kind of struggles and how did yeah. you resolve So that? Um, essentially we would just have like a family meeting and kind of, and we actually just had one recently because it's the beginning of the next year. We still have these meetings and it's not so much now, do we want to homeschool next year, but kind of like what worked, what went well, what did you like about last year and what would you like to see change? What were some things that were um you know, that you'd like to change about it. Um, so in the beginning, that's kind of what it was like, how is homeschooling? What do we like about it? What do we not like about it? Um, what are, you know, just kind of weighing the pros and cons in deciding as a family and letting every person have a say in, and, you know, for some families too, I mean, in the beginning, I was okay with like, maybe some kids would go to school if that's what they wanted, because every kid is different. Mm-hmm. Every kid learns different, has a different learning style. And I, that's actually one of the reasons I love homeschooling is I can teach them all differently Mm -hmm. because I don't have 40 kids. I don't have the expectations or the standards or the, the rules of the school. So, 
each kid has different learning styles and I can cater or customize their learning to them, which I think is like what God does for us. Mm-hmm, right? For sure. We each have our own curriculum here on earth, right? We each have our own trials and our trials are unique to what we need for our personal growth. And so that's kind of how I see our education in the home. And then um, tell me about getting on the same page with your husband. Yeah. So that was <laughs> a lot more challenging. Um, it's actually interesting because he was probably more like jumping on the homeschool game <laughs> before I was because he didn't have to do it. I was yeah. the one who was the kids. I'm like, hold uh-huh. up. <laughs> In theory, it sounds good, but wait, wait, I'm the one that has to yeah. But then eventually, um, you know, he wasn't home to see the progress. He didn't know, like, is she going to learn to read? Like, does she know how, I'm like, you know, that I think is the hardest thing is learning to read, like helping our kids learn to read that. That's, I think the biggest challenge. And also the thing that most moms have the the doubt, the most doubt of, um, and oh my gosh, it's been such a learning experience. Um, that challenge has taught me so much about empowering our children and to help them learn and how to learn. Um, sorry, I forgot the question. Oh, getting on the same page. Oh, getting on the same page. Yeah. So, um, my husband, I remember when he, I started having him, like the kids do some schoolwork at at night with dad. And that's the beauty of it is you can be flexible. Like homeschooling doesn't look the same for any family, right? You can do it however you want. So, um, eventually what we started doing is, um, you know, in the beginning, sorry, I'm, I'm getting. That's all right. Confused. Um, it's always fantastic. <laughs> awesome. My brain wants to start talking about something else right now. And so I'm trying to like answer this question and then I'll go to that. Um, but yeah, I eventually it was just showing him like our kids, they may not know like all the facts that public school kids. And it's funny because a lot of people will, um, quiz your kids. Mm. <laughs> they want to see what do they know? And it's funny that they do that, but it's also interesting because I don't care if they don't know the answers to their questions Mm -hmm. because my kids love to learn. Mm -hmm. They have a passion for the things that they love and what they learn. Right. And to me, that's so much more important because that's going to drive their learning throughout their life versus, um, a lot of kids that go through public school. And, And again, I'm not trying to make judgments, but for us, for me and my husband, like this was our experience. You get to high school, you're tired, you get your, your college or your high school diploma and you just kind of hang it on the shelf. And it's like, I'm done. I don't have to open up another book. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's interesting because then we went to college and we could study whatever we want. Now we have the freedom to learn whatever we want. And that's when we loved learning was because we were driving it. It wasn't somebody telling us what to learn. It was, we get to learn whatever we want. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. So what was the other thing you were thinking? so let's see if I can remember now <laughs> you know what I don't remember <laughs> um well I think that that whole spin on it makes it very appealing <laughs> yeah. and it definitely everything you're saying I'm like you would definitely need a coach to help you get in that headspace if you're not there already you know yeah so that that reminded me what okay good so, yeah so it's interesting because I didn't have a coach going through all this Mm -hmm. and, um, every year I got a little bit closer to where we are today. So for example, the first year and most families who come from public school, they will try to recreate public school at home. Mm -hmm. So they'll have a school room. They'll have like all the learning things on the wall and maybe even desks for the kids with all the cute little things like a, um, organized, you know, just very organized and very Mm -hmm. school-like, there's nothing wrong with that. But what in my experience, my first year, I had the whole year planned to the T, Mm -hmm. what they were going to learn the whole school year, all the learning goals, all the curriculum picked out down to like what lessons they were going to learn each day because I wanted to be organized. Right. Mm -hmm. And the first day, like it was them fighting again, like trying to get them to sit still and respect me as a teacher. Yeah. You know, and home where they're they're used to playing and Mm -hmm. resting and now they have to do their work Mm -hmm. like that wasn't like it was a huge shift um ask me what de-schooling is because I'm that's what I want to talk about next tell me about de-schooling yeah so um well hold on let me get to that so (laughs) I went I essentially this was de-schooling what we did is 
that first year, I threw away all that plan. I didn't, I, I threw it away completely. And I was like, you know what, my goal for this first year, because I was butting heads with my kids and they were butting heads with me. And I had to threaten them every day to go back to public school. That was how I got them to sit and do their schoolwork. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is like, there was so much contention. This isn't fun. It's not mm-hmm. fun for me. It's fun for them. I hate this. They hate yeah. this. Yeah. Why are we doing this? It's like, yeah, it defeated yeah, the whole That's thing. literally all I can imagine when I yeah. think about homeschooling <laughs> is yeah, that scenario. That's because, <laughs> that's because I was more focused on the brain instead of the heart. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was like trying to get them to learn up here instead of learn here. And so that's kind of where the next year I was like, well, okay, so let me start with that year. So we threw out the plan completely. And I was like, we're just going to cook together. We're going to do art projects together. We're going to go on nature walks together. We're going to go to the library. And I'm going to ask my kids, what do you want to read? Like, what do you want to learn about? Do you have an animal that you're interested in that you love? Do you have, um, I don't know, a hobby that we want to like develop? It was just really putting it back in their hands and um, letting them lead. Mm-hmm. And we learned more that year without any plan at all. And it was just my experimental year. Mm-hmm. It was the year that I was going to unlearn how we learn at school and just learn how they learn. And it's not even like, it was very individual. Like I said, each kid has a different learning style. So it was me developing a really unique relationship with each child one-on-one and knowing them, who are they as a child in a way that I had never done before because I didn't need to. And I got to see um, a a different part of them, a light in their eyes. When they, like when my daughter learned how to read, I loved being the one that got to see her so proud of being able to, you know, accomplish that hard goal. And I just remember being like, oh my gosh, like I, I can't believe that I've like delegated this. Like, this is such an honor to be able to do this, you know? Um, but then the next year we kind of weaved back in the curriculum because I was in my head. I'm like, well, they have to learn curriculum. They can't not like, you know, we got to learn certain things. So we brought that back in. And then I noticed that it went back to the other, like butting heads again. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Good to know. But I wasn't willing to let it go. Like you got to get through this workbook by May 31st or June, whatever. Mm -hmm. That was like, you know, the, my expectation. But the more that I did that, the less heart there was, you know, it was more, they were doing it for me instead of because, you know, they wanted to learn it. Um, So eventually I just gave up all expectations and I was like, okay, you, we, I gave them curriculum and we use a variety of different curriculum curricula, but, um, I see it more as a springboard to our learning. We're not married to it. So it's like, I offer them a buffet and then I let them choose what they want to eat and put on their plate. And they love to learn and they learn more. I, in my opinion, because they want to, and we get more done. We're not spending so much time, so much time butting heads and trying to force learning down their throats that they don't want to partake. Um, did you say what D school was? Yeah. So D schooling is essentially like, um, the unlearning of the public school way of the, you know, how to learn. And essentially that's that? kind of what we did naturally over the course of several years. Every year we got a little bit less structured, the school way and more developing our own way. And so that's kind of what I call the heart way where moms, and it doesn't even look the same for each mom who heart learns, right? Because yeah. each mom is unique. We have yes. our own different styles styles of mothering, styles of living. And so our day looks different compared to another heart learning family. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's totally my message is that you are an individual. There's no cookie cutter way a mom needs to look. There's no cookie cutter way a home mom, a homeschool mom needs to look. So what does the D stand for in D school? Um, so it's essentially just like deconstructing the belief that we have when it comes to learning because of how we were taught to learn in public school. Okay, fun. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. The brain just wants to keep us safe, right? And so anytime we're going to break out of the mold, the brain will just scream at you like, no, 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 don't do it. That's scary. That's scary. That's scary. Because it thinks we're going to die. Like it thinks our kids are going to die. Everyone's going to die if they don't learn how to read it at an exact specific age (laughs) and whatever that expectation is, right? And so breaking out of the expectation mold is really, really hard. And that's 
what you need a coach for, right? Right. Because maybe this sounds appealing to you, but you're really, really scared because it's a lot easier to just follow a curriculum, follow rules, follow expectations. Um, especially because that's the way our brains have been developed. Right. Right. And so, um, Laura, tell people how they can find you and how you can help them make the transition or if they are homeschooling and they've got struggles or if whatever, they just want to learn from your amazingness. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram, ginger up underscore heart learning. I'm also on Facebook. My business name is ginger up, um, ginger up coaching with Laura. Which is so cute because Laura's a redhead. Right. Yes. That's where the yes. ginger is coming from. I so, yeah, it actually is partially that, but also before I did this kind of coaching, I was doing um, juice coaching, which is um, I'm a I'm a life I'm a certified juice coach, which is so funny. Like people don't even know that's a thing. Yeah. Um, I had a juice business. I had I we love juice, and one of the juices that I became really popular was had ginger in it. It's a tonic. Like during 2020, it was lemon, um, ginger, and turmeric, and um, so yeah, it's really good for your immunity. So that's kind of, we, we bridged together our, our businesses. <laughs> so fun. That is so yeah. fun. So you're still juicing too then? Yeah, I do. I don't um, sell it like I was doing before, but uh-huh. I definitely, yeah, we juice every day in our home. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, Instagram. Yeah. Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. And we'll have all the links in the show notes. So yeah. this is so good. Because finding out who you are, that's what I talk about all the time. And we need to find out who our kids are too, you know, Mm -hmm. instead of just trying to squeeze them into a box that they don't fit in. Well, and if I could just add one up about that, um, I think for me, I didn't know who I was. Yeah. So I put myself on the back burner because all of the kids needs were so like taking over. Mm -hmm. Right. And so a lot of my journey was learning to prioritize myself and love myself. And that led to helping my children love themselves and love learning because it all starts with a love for ourselves, right? Yes, exactly. And that's why that's what I focus on. So even like when I'm helping my T1D moms, you know, we're just so consumed with managing our child's diabetes that we for sure are just on the back burner. I always call it, um, you know, how when you go to make rice and you forget, (laughs) so the pot like boils and then it like you burn the pot (laughs) because there's no water left in there. (laughs) Like that's us on the back burner over there, you know? And so we have to remember to keep filling our own pot, (laughs) right? So the, and maybe even get the rice in there and make something out of that water at some point. Right. (laughs) So, um, yeah, that's so important. And once, and always modeling teaches more than anything, you know, we just want to teach them. We want them to learn whatever it is. Like if we're trying to teach them how to read, then do they ever see us reading? Do we read to them? Do we love reading? Is reading fun? Or is it like the chore that causes all the, the, uh, head budding <laughs> and power right. struggles, right? So modeling who finding out who we are and loving ourselves helps them feel safe in exploring exactly. out who they are because it may be against the grain and it may not be in the mold and that is scary for the brain (laughs) and so we've got to make it a super safe place where they can do that and we can do that and we can let our husbands do that and everyone's yeah figuring out who we are (laughs) it's awesome okay laura thank you so much for being here you're welcome thank you and we'll talk to everybody again next time bye